Thank you, Iran. I'm looking for the mechanism that will find for me the camel from the face picture uh, at the beginning. Um, our next uh, uh, speaker, and actually the last one before lunch, so be strong, uh, uh, is uh, uh, my colleague, Professor uh, Avishai Wool, who is uh, on also uh, part of the leading team of the ICRC. Uh, professor Wool is an uh, um, associate professor in the School of Electrical Engineering in Tel Aviv University, the director of the Cryptography and Network Security Lab. He received uh, his BSc in Mathematics and Computer Science with honors from Tel Aviv University. He has a MSc and PhD, both in Computer Science, from Weizmann uh, Institute of Science. His research uh, in interests include firewall technology, computer network, and wireless security, smart card and RFID systems, and side channel crypto analysis. Please, Professor Wood. Thank you. I'll try to uh, uh, keep us in time for lunch. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm not going to be talking too much about uh, crypto. There's going to be some crypto involved, but not a whole lot. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, uh, secure containers and Android, uh, specifically uh, about Samsung Knox. So uh, let me present the problem uh, that we wanted to look at. Uh, so this is the introduction. Um, so first of all, I'd like to remind us of the acronym BYOD, Bring Your Own Device. Uh, it's a big deal in uh, uh, corporate corporations now where people bring their own uh, smartphones and tablets, laptops to their work, uh, and they expect to use them there. Um, and basically what it means is that they want to connect their own devices to the corporate systems, uh, the email and the corporate applications and so on. Um, and this poses a big problem to the IT staff of uh, the enterprises because everybody has their own phone, their administrators on their own phone, so I can install whatever applications uh, that I want on my, my phone. Um, sometimes very bad things get installed by accident or, or intentionally on, on my phone, and then I go to, the, uh, to my employer's uh, network and I want to use my totally insecure phone to connect to the sensitive systems that they have there. Um, and so there's a tension between the IT staff in workplaces and the employees where people want to use the stuff that they're convenient, that's convenient for them and the uh, companies don't like to approve that. Uh, and the way that uh, it seems the world is going to, uh, in terms of handling that tension, is this concept of um, containers. Basically, you have on your phone, you have like a little area where as a phone owner you have limited or no control. It's like an enclave that is given to the uh, IT staff of your employer and they're the only pe people that are supposed to be able to put things in that secure enclave or secure container. And applications inside that secure piece of your phone are supposed to be under control, secured and approved for use. Uh, and then they would be allowed to connect to stuff that's sensitive in your work environment. Uh, there's all kinds of solutions around this concept uh, by all kinds of uh, like software companies. Android for Work is something that actually Google themselves are shipping. And we're going to be talking about Samsung Knox, which is a solution developed by Samsung uh, as a, a, a phone um, integrator and developer, uh, which is interesting in various ways. <coughs> So um, what we did is um, we looked at this Samsung Knox uh, system and we did a security analysis of it, uh, which was technically kind of challenging. Uh, and we found all kinds of things. Some of them were actual vulnerabilities, so real problems and mistakes that we reported on. These are the CD numbers. Uh, but also some more fundamental things of challenges of how these things are difficult to do and what types of mistakes are typical. Uh, in such container solutions that, that people might come up with. Um, OK, 
Okay, I'll skip this. Um, let's talk a few words about Samsung Knox. Uh, so, um, obviously Samsung make phones, uh, and they have this Knox component inside their phones. Uh, it's a closed source system, so uh, we don't really know, well, until our work, uh, a whole lot of what's going on inside uh, the Knox system. Uh, there is a sequence of uh, white papers that Samsung has uh, um, published uh, that describe some of the architecture and components and features that they have in there, um, and which, is, which we found to be quite useful, uh, but that hasn't been uh, uh, validated by too much research because it's just difficult since it's closed source. Um, it is built in, so any, anybody that has a Samsung uh, uh, um, Galaxy or Note, uh, whether you know it or not, you have Knox on that phone, uh, and you can decide to use it or not. Um, and an interesting feature, and one of the big advantages of Knox over some of the other solutions that are out there, is that it's based on a hardware root of trust, specifically the ARM trust zone. Uh, so, most cell phones, certainly all of uh, Samsung's cell phones, uh, use the CPU made by ARM. Uh, and ARM has inside it a thing called a trust zone. This is a security component in the hardware. And Samsung Knox relies on that, which is a good thing uh, from a security per point of view. It's one of their major advantages over, for instance, solutions from Google, which is totally software. In Samsung, they do rely on the hardware, which is uh, an advantage. So let's spend a minute or so talking about what is this ARM trust zone. So let's forget for a second about Samsung and just talk about the CPU inside the phone. Uh, so, the, so the ARM trust zone idea is that on the, phone, on the smartphone's uh, uh, CPU, there's really two parts. There's a, the, what, what, what's called the normal world, so that's most of the processor that's running the normal uh, software applications, operating systems, and so on. That's on the left-hand side. And then inside the same CPU, there's also a secure world, there's a small area uh, that is supposed to be only for uh, security-related sensitive code, um, and it, it runs, instead of applications, it runs what's called trust threads. It's the same thing, but um, with a different name. Uh, and these two things run in separate areas, geographic areas of the hardware, in parallel, um, but they can't really talk to each other and they can't see everything that the, the other does except, the, except through very specific interfaces. Uh, if the normal world wants to communi communicate to the secure world, they, it has to go through a special trust room driver and a special hardware instruction that says the secure monitor called in red down here. That's the only way to transfer information from the normal world to the secure world. The secure world has more privileges. It can actually look and see uh, everything that's going on in the normal world. Uh, okay, is it better? Sorry. Um, yeah, so the, 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 the secure world can see into the, the uh, normal world, can actually read the memory and check what's going on. Uh, and if we want to reflect this uh, hardware structure into uh, what we have in uh, uh, Android, so the normal world is the normal Android operating system and all the applications, everything we know of uh, in our day to day. And in the secure world, there's a special little component uh, made, there's a couple of them, uh, MobiCore or QSCE, um, special tiny little operating systems that run these little trustlets and help secure, allegedly, uh, the normal world. Uh, so there is some hardware infrastructure there that's supposed to help. Now, and, and Nox, does rely on this, so it's interesting to find out what they actually did with it uh, and what sort of properties they get from it. <laughs> at this point, we can uh, uh, take a look at the, um, the various security layers that are in uh, these Samsung phones. So at the top, there is, this is going from uh, top, from uh, software level all the way down to hardware. So at the top, we have the Android framework. This is a normal, uh, uh, Android, which uses SE Linux for Android. This is, again, a common uh, security component that many uh, uh, Linux systems use. And then under that, there is a spe special stuff that's in Knox. So they have this thing called Trust Zone-Based Integrity Measurement Architecture. Short, in shorthand is TEMA. 
Uh, we'll talk some about that. Then there's a secure and trusted boot. So the, when you s power up your phone, uh, it goes through specific um, uh, steps that are secured to uh, um, identify if you've done anything strange to it. And then at the bottom, there's the hardware root of trust that ARM as a CPU vendor provides. Um, and I'd like to draw our attention to this part where we have the secure and trusted boot. In it, there is a thing called a Knox warranty bit, okay? Uh, so a Knox warranty bit is kind of interesting. Um, and uh, what it is, is it's a feature of Knox that prevents the device from powering up uh, if it's been rooted. So if you decide to install, you, to flash your device and install uh, um, an, an, a version of the operating system that wasn't signed by Samsung, then you're going to trip the warranty bit and the phone will uh, uh, record that the warranty bit has been uh, broken. It's what's called a hardware e-fuse. So once it's broken, you can't unbreak it. It's part of the trust zone, so you can't change it back. Once it's broken, it's broken. Um, and what it does is that it, it, um, um, it doesn't forbid your phone from booting. You can still power up your phone and use it, but it remembers that the warranty bit has been broken, and so certain security functionalities will be disabled. In particular, uh, it refuses to uh, let you activate your NOx. So if you have in your, on your phone a secure enclave that's supposed to be for your work environment, if you rooted your phone and tripped the, uh, the warranty bit, the NOx will, will refuse to work anymore and you won't be able to access your corporate uh, resources using that phone anymore, unless you revert to a, a standard uh, version signed by, uh, by Samsung. So this is a very interesting uh, uh, feature, this, uh, this warranty bit. Uh, has little to do with warranty, actually. I believe that Samsung has no problem fixing phones with a warranty bit uh, broken. It's just really a security feature. Okay, now let's look at Trust Zone uh, uh, and Tima. So Tima is, a, is, is uh, one or two uh, trustlets running in the, um, inside the uh, Trust Zone. And what they do is, uh, they, they do uh, uh, real-time kernel protection, so they have a component that looks at the, at the normal world operating system and makes sure that none of the critical infrastructure there hasn't been tampered with. Uh, it uh, does periodic kernel measurements, that's this PKM, PKM thing, which checks whether memory has been reset, whether any uh, uh, important data structures within the kernel have been overwritten by a flashed uh, system and so on. It does include a key store. This is where it's supposed to handle cryptographic material. And there's other things. Okay, so all of this is really um, supposed to be well known. This is uh, published by Samsung. What did we do? Well, we took a, a few Samsung phones and we uh, um, hacked them, basically. Uh, and uh, we discovered all kinds of interesting things. I won't have time to tell you all of them, but a, a few of the interesting points that we found um, that were a little bit surprising uh, are the following. So the first I want to point out is that uh, Knox applications are forked, that's uh, uh, computer geek language for started or initiated, uh, just like any normal other application, like a normal world application. Uh, they run alongside the other applications. They're not really separate, they're just like every other application, except that they have a, a different SE Linux context, which limits what they can do. Uh, and they do run through a shared resource, this thing called the system server. It's a critical central piece of Android that provides many, many services to all the applications that run on Android. And the same system server also provides functionality to uh, uh, Nox applications that are supposed to be secure. So you get this rather complicated system. You have this thing called Zygote, which is the root of all applications. It starts up all the applications in Android. It starts up the untrusted applications, oops, sorry, but also the Nox ones. Uh, and the system server provides services through the kernel to all of these applications. So there's shared code. There's big parts of shared code, specifically this uh, system server and this Zygote thing 
These are big pieces of Android that are shared and are used by normal and secure application, and that is an area of concern and something that is uh, a source of problems. Uh, now, we are in a crypto session, so I, I wanted to take, I'll take a few uh, minutes to talk about the cryptography that we found inside Knox. So there is an encrypted file system there. <coughs> it's based on uh, this thing called eCryptFS. This is not something that uh, Samsung invented. It's used in, in, in uh, other Linux type systems. Um, it's based on a, user pass uh, on a user type password. So when you log into Knox, you type in your password. Uh, that is going to be the fundamental part of the encryption. Um, and uh, we found that the password is actually available in many places in plain text while it makes its way from when you type it until it, all, it gets into, tr into the trust zone. So they didn't really use the hardware properly for this aspect. Um, they also, uh, uh, um, at, at least in a version that we checked, the, the, the way they derived the encryption password from the password was kind of silly uh, and basically only took the first eight characters and uh, ignored them, so it was pretty bad. But they fixed that later on. Um, another bad piece of design that we discovered is that um, the encryption key is actually not generated inside the trusted hardware. It's generated outside the trusted hardware and then installed and saved inside the trusted hardware. If you do it that way, then the encryption key is living happily in the normal world and it just goes in and comes back out, but you can catch it in, in both directions. So uh, not a good choice if you have security hardware there. You could, they could have done the key generation and storage and decryption all inside the secure hardware would have been much more secure than what we uh, found. Um, okay, I think we're running out of time and I'm keeping us all from lunch, so I'm going to uh, zip ahead. This is, I'd like to mention this thing where w we found all kinds of attacks possible. Uh, some of them require root, so uh, remember the reason for trust zone is to, to protect the trusted environment from users that have full administrative capabilities. Well, if you have full capabilities on your outside phone, then you can do many, many things uh, that you wouldn't really be supposed to uh, in, in the trusted area. In particular, um, uh, apparently when you have the, tr the, the encrypted file system, it remains mounted for as long as the phone is powered up. And, until you actually physically power it down, the, the file system is uh, powered up. So if you have root, you can just change directory and look at the encrypted uh, files because they've been decrypted for you. Um, this thing is actually doesn't require any kind of root. This, this is a, a problem that comes from being uh, using shared code in the uh, system server. Uh, apparently, you can install a certificate in the normal world uh, and then the same certificate storage is used for, the, for applications running inside the uh, uh, secure zone. So uh, you can, a, a malicious application can install a fake certificate uh, for, I don't know, Gmail or something. And then when you try, or, or your corporate email, and then from an application inside uh, the, the, the Knox security zone, it would get that certificate and trust it and use it. And so you get this nice uh, man-in-the-middle type of situation where uh, the, um, the fake certificate is served to the applications inside Knox. So the problem here is that there's a shared server that works both for security applications and for non-secure applications. Uh, and I think I will stop with that uh, just for the sake of lunch. If everybody ha anybody has questions for me, I'll be, able to I'll be happy to take them. Just remember that you're holding up your colleagues from eating. Thank you. We, we will ask the speakers to join us to the stage for a picture and see you later at 1.30. Uh,